Simplifying Algebraic Expressions, 4.4 from Nelson. I want to start off with a nice easy couple of examples and work up to some more complex questions that maybe you were assigned for your homework and needed some little help with. So let's take a look at these first ones here. So if I had 2x and I asked you to square it, I'm sure you would know that that means 2x times 2x and if you expanded that properly, you would say 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x is x squared. So if we move on to cubed, you can see that this would be the same thing, except I would have to write out three of these because I'm cubing it. Now, you're not going to write them out like this when you do your assignment. I mean, that, that would take you way too much time. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and x times x times x is x cubed. So what I want you to see in this exercise is that this evaluation, ooh, red pen, need a red pen. This evaluation is really just the following. So I do 2 cubed and x cubed. So this cube here applies to each of the terms in the brackets, and that is key to doing this assignment. So let's move on to this next one here. So you can see I have 2x minus 3y squared, all cubed, and the stuff in the bottom squared. So that means I'm going to write out long at first so that you will see where these are all coming from. So I have 2 and I had x to the minus 3, I'm going to leave a little bit of space there, and y squared. And each one of these is governed by this cube. So I have to cube each of these terms. So this is 2 cubed, x to the minus 3 cubed, y squared cubed. Okay, you see how that applied to each of the terms. Um, a usual, very common mistake is people are forgetting to apply this exponent to the constant. The constant is also affected by this. So don't mess that up. Don't forget to do it. So I have x cubed and I had y to the minus 4. And these are all squared. So I have this to the power of 2, this to the power of 2. And I'm breaking one of my cardinal rules with my students. Never do your math homework in ink. It's just that it's a little easier for you to see if I do it in pen than if I did it in pencil. So now you can see that I have each of these to the power of 3. So 2 cubed is just 8. x to the minus 3 cubed is x to the 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. And y squared cubed is y to the power of 6. And down in the denominator here, power to a power means multiply, remember? So I'm going to multiply those. So it gives me x to the 6th, y to the negative 8. Now, I should have left more space because I never put two equal signs on a line, and now I'm going to have three of them. But you know, if I wanted to give my answer with positive exponents now, um, you can see that if I do minus 9 minus 6, that means I would have minus 15 up here. So if I want it to be positive, I just have to put it in the denominator. So I can do 6 minus minus 9 down here. I'm going to leave my 8 in the top because I don't have another constant to work with. But this and this one, so I can do x to the 6th minus minus 9. Or if you brought this up here and subtracted, you would have had a negative 15. If I want a positive exponent, I have to put it in the denominator. I always tell my students if your exponents are bad, put them in the basement, they become good. See, look, change signs. And this is 6 minus minus 8. That would be to the power of 14. So that's how you would do that little basic one. And that is um, simplifying and making sure that you got rid of the exponents and left with positive, a positive exponent answer. Okay, let's go on to some evaluations. So it says evaluate for x is minus 3 and n is equal to 2. So you have this big complicated question, which if you know your exponent rules, you can simplify before you plug these things in. Or you could just plug them in from the start. But generally, the question would say simplify and then evaluate it. So let's do that. So I'm multiplying. Notice all, all the bases are the same. They're all x's, right? They're all x, 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 x. So if I'm multiplying these, that means I need to add the exponents. So I have 2n plus 1, and I'm adding 3n minus 1, and that would fix up the numerator. 
And then I would have to subtract what's in the denominator. And here is where you have to be really careful because you want to subtract what's in the bracket here. Subtract everything. So it would be 2n plus 5 when I apply this minus. So I'm just going to leave it there so that I know what I'm doing. So I have x to the 2n plus 3n. That's 5n. x to, sorry, to the 5. This is why you don't use ink or pens. And plus 1 minus 1, well, that's nothing. So I have 5n and I'm subtracting. So I'm going to do the minus part here now. Minus 2n plus 5. And that's going to be x to the 3n plus 5. And now I can evaluate that for x is minus 3 and n is 2. So that would be x to the 3 times minus 3. Oh, just a minute. Sorry, that's a little bit. And I do. I put the n in. So 3 times 2 here. That's n is 2. And my x has to be minus 3. So I have minus 3 to the power of 6 plus 5 is 11. And minus 3 to the power of 11, well, that's when you need to call in a calculator because the answer is something crazy like minus 1,777, 147, like that. Okay, so you do that on your calculator. Okay, let's go to another simplifying one. Here again, Remember what I just said, you have to use these exponents and apply them to each of the terms in the brackets. So both of these. So basically that means I have 27 to the one third, a to the minus three to the one third, b to the 12th to the one third. And you can see how nicely that's all going to simplify for me here. And this is 16 to the half. Now, you might not need to write out this line if you're a really good student and you don't need to do this. But I want to show all the steps, you know, where it's coming from. Okay, so now I have the cube root of 27, that's 3. And a to the minus a third times a third would be a to the minus 3 over 3 or minus 1. And b 12 times 1 third, that's 12 over 3, is 4. And in the denominator, 16 to the half, that's the square root of 16, which is 4. a to the negative 8 to the half power, that's a to the minus 4. And b times 12 times a half is 6. Okay, so I'm almost finished. Now, if I want positive exponents, my, my 3 quarters is going to stay here. It's not going anywhere. Can't work with these. They're simplified. And minus 1 minus minus 4 would be minus 1 plus 4. So that would give me 3 up here. And if I brought this up here, you see I'd have 4 minus 6 is negative 2. But that would put it down in the denominator. And there's your answer for that. Okay, let's do a few more examples from your homework kind of questions. With a little bit of rules here on what you can do. Now this question isn't written in radical form or rational form, the, the rational exponents are kind of hidden in here. So you want to rewrite this initially with rational exponents and then apply the power rule, then simplify. And then because the question was given in radical form, you should give your answer in radical form. Maybe your teacher won't mind, but I would have asked for that myself. Okay, so, <coughs> sorry, the fifth root of x to the eighth that's x to the, remember the 5 is your denominator and your 8 is your numerator. That's the inside the bracket part here. And this, this is the square root. So that gives me 2 in the denominator and 3 in the numerator. And then the whole thing is raised to the third power. So if I want to simplify this now, I need to work with the exponents here. So this is x to the 3 times 8 fifths. Now you could simplify this first if you want. You could find a common denominator and subtract them. Um, doesn't really matter which order you do that in. So I'm going to do it this way first. I'm going to say, well, that's 24 over 5 in the numerator. x to the 3 halves cubed would be x to the 9 halves. 
and then I would have to find a common denominator. So I have x to the 24 over 5 is the same as 48 over 10. And I would subtract this one, which would be 45 over 10, multiplying numerator and denominator by 5. So that gives me x to the power of 3 over 10. And that's my answer. x to the power of 3 over 10. So you can see how if you, you simplify carefully, um, work from the inside out, you don't really have too much trouble. And again, if you want to write that as a radical, this would be the tenth root of x cubed, right? Remember the denominator is the root you're taking and this is the exponent. Okay, a couple more. Here's one that's written with decimals and stuff. So I would put this as one fifth power, first of all. So um, we can write that out to the power of one fifth. So let's do that. So we have 32x, now we have 5 to the minus 2 to the, see how I have this to this to this, right? So what I want to do first is I want to rewrite this, um, rewrite this part so that I'm getting rid of some of these exponents as I'm going along. So let, let's leave it like this to the minus 2 and we have x to the minus 1 to the 10. And this is all really to the 0 0.2, which is 1 fifth. So now I can multiply this by this and this by this one. So that would be, I leave the 32x to the fifth. Now there are different ways to do this. You're probably saying, well, why don't you just simplify these ones first? You could, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just whatever way looks easier. So this is going to be to the minus 2 fifths and this is going to be x to the minus 1, and 10 times 1 fifth is 2. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so now I can take the fifth root of this and square it and do 1 over it, which is a possibility that I would consider. So I'd say, well, what's the fifth root of 32? 2. 2 squared, 4. Negative means one over it, one over your answer. Okay, so if you didn't catch that from my other lesson, pay attention. X to the fifth to the two fifth, that's X to the minus 10 over five or X to the minus two. And in the denominator, I have X to the minus two. X to the minus two and X to the minus two, well, those are the same thing. So my answer is, oops. Run out of room. 1 over 4. That's it. That's all. Wasn't so hard. Okay, always check your answers in the back of the book. Make sure you're getting the right answers when you're doing these because, you know, don't, don't instill bad habits and continue working with them. Okay, evaluate for a is 11 and b is 10. Well, if you put in a is 11 here, you'd have 11 to the fourth power. You don't want to do that on your calculator. You want to simplify it first, right? So let's bring this in, multiply this by each of these powers. So I have 25a to the fourth. Now minus one times a half is minus a half. And in the denominator, I would have seven a to the minus two b and two times a half is one. So to the one, the one power. Okay, so now I have a negative a half. So 25 to the negative a half. Remember, like I said before, you have to apply this to this one and to this one. So the square root of 25 is five and I want one over it. So that's one fifth. Square root of five to the power of one, one over it. And a to the fourth to the minus a half is a to the minus two. Four times a half is minus four halves. And in the denominator, I have 7a to the minus 2b. 7a to the minus 2 and b. Ooh, a minus 2. Well, the minus 2s cancel out. These ones are gone. And I have a fifth. Let's write that over here because this is where people get mixed up. 1 fifth divided by 7 is 1 fifth times 1 over 7. So that's just 1 over 35 and I still have a b. 1 over 35b. 
So now it's really easy to evaluate when b is 10, when b equals 10, that leaves me with 1 over 350. Ta-da. Okay, one more, and then I'm going to, I'm going to go for a kayak. It's a beautiful day here. Okay, so another really complicated looking one. And this time, I would think, if you look at this to this power, there's no constant or anything, so it's really easy to simplify this part first. So I'm going to do that. 18 times 1 over minus 1 6, that would be x to the minus 3, right? 18 over 6, and it's negative. And in the denominator, I'm going to write this with a rational exponent. So that's 243 x to the 10, and it's to the 1 -fifth. You have to be careful with the constants. So you, you can't just kind of pull that one away from the exponent because this is one, the fifth root of this number and the fifth root of this. And this whole thing is to the 0.5 or 1 half. So x to the negative 3 to the half is x to the minus 3 halves. That's my numerator. But my denominator, I want the fifth root of 243. And you can be pretty sure it's going to be something small, like a 3, right? 3 to the power of 5 is 243. So I have 3, and x to the 10 times 1 fifth is 2. So now I have, this is, uh, if I subtracted these now, I'd have x to the 3 halves, minus 3 halves. This is going to be very negative, right? Minus 2 is 4 halves, and this is over 3. So that's x to the minus 6 halves, which is x to the minus 3. So I have this, but I don't want a negative exponent, so I would say that's 1 over 3 x cubed. And that is it for today. I hope that helped you out and uh, that we didn't do any mistakes anywhere. Did you see anything there? I think it's good. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.